Good morning, America! How are ya? Monday morning rail. Hi, I'm Denny Yelsma, and I'm at the world-famous Jacksonville Terminal Railroad Museum layout, and today is Monday, and you know what we do on Monday, you guessed it, it's show and tell, and show and tell starts right now. Hi, my name is Richard New. I'm a member here at the Jacksonville Terminal Model Railroad Club. And today we're going to talk about putting a cuboidal shaped kit, structure kit, into a pyramid space so it's not going to fit the way it's originally designed. What I've been given is this old Concord kit. As you can see, it's a uh, rectangular shaped three dimensional building. Now the space we're going to put it in has a footprint like this, a triangle shape, about two inches deep, about seven inches long. That's what I got to fit it into. Now of course, I've got the instructions. It comes with the kit. It's very handy for finding pieces parts. But most of these I am not going to use. <laughs> so if you want to, we can throw this away. But I'm not. Because there are parts on here that I'm going to have to find when I get the final model built. And since I don't know what they look like, this is, has labels on it to tell me what they are. So in that point, it's handy. So, what we're going to do is take pieces, parts from the kit to fit the space. And I've been working on that this past week. It's got one side for the building and I think it's three parts for the side walls. This is one piece here, this is one piece here, and this is another piece. Now for those of you who have not kit bashed a building before, this is what you do. You just take the pieces, line them up the way you want them, glue them together. I use MEK with a paintbrush and it spreads the MEK out. Actually it's artificial MEK but it works just fine. And to, add, to give some extra strength to the finished product, I apply extra pieces of styrene to join everything together, even on the roof. The roof is two pieces from the kit. Right here is the dividing line. So to give it some strength lengthwise, I install some styrene strip. I've also included, um, I think it's called Tamiya putty, this white stuff, to cover off some uh, holes that the styrene didn't fill. On the front side, that Tamiya putty was installed where awnings were supposed to be installed. But this is supposed to be an older house, right next to the tracks, not kept up very well. So I'm doing away with the awnings. Eventually, I will put uh, window structures inside with curtains and such, but that's not right now. Before I do that, I'm gonna paint the outside of the building, get away from this god awful yellow, and I'm gonna paint the inside black. Because when I put a light strip in here, if I don't paint the inside black, there might be a spot in this yellow plastic where the light will show through it. Now, I don't want that. You don't want that. So on any stru plastic structure you build, paint the inside black. It doesn't have to be gloss. It can be flat, whatever black you've got. You can use a brush, which is nice and heavy, or you can spray paint it. So, one other thing, I've got this hole in the roof here, this is where a, a chimney piece is supposed to be if I've built the kit according to directions. Well, I'm not going to do that. So that left a hole in the piece, and there's a hole right up here in this corner of the building. It just came that way. To cover that up, I've, you can tell I've got a piece of aluminum on here. This is just kitchen grade aluminum pressed in place. The great part about this is you can take an X-Acto knife or anything sharp pointed, 
drag it across to represent roofing material or wood from underneath to help support the hole in the roof. On this side here, I do the same thing with another piece of aluminum and drag a, an exacto blade across it, the, the dull side, to represent the wood scribing. Scribe the, scribe the siding in it to represent the wood siding on the side of the building. I've also got two cussets that I cut just from uh, cheap styrene. This gives this, this wall here some extra strength along with a piece of styrene in the vertical uh, mold joint there. The only other thing I did, the foundation that came with this thing has molded blocks in it. I took off what I needed, just cut it with X-Acto, snipped it with a, a, a pair of cutters, and glued it in place, added more styrene to help bond everything together. I also added more Tamiya, Tamiya putty to fill in any cracks and scribe them before it dried to represent the blocks. Uh, next time I fiddle, fiddle with this, after I paint it, I'll be in installing some window units, some glass, maybe even some curtains behind here, and blocking off certain window openings with black construction paper to prevent light from showing through representing rooms that are not lit. And that'll be next week. That's all I got. Would you like to show oh, kind yes. of where that's going? When we get it in place, it will sit right about there. There will be a backside piece to it to help block the light. And then we'll add scenery around the edges of it to fit it into the scene. And that's it for this week. One thing I forgot to mention. On this club, one of our policies is every building has to have a bottom to it. This will be glued in place on the layout so that the building structure can sit on top of it so that we can lift it off whenever we need to do maintenance inside, like drilling a hole here somewhere for the lighting circuit. But that's for another time. Well, thank you, Richard. You know, Richard knew who is one of more recent why this layout is so fantastic. And that's the way it is at the world famous Jacksonville Terminal Railroad Museum in beautiful Jacksonville, Florida.